All right, guys, it is time to talk about what I am bringing with me to CES, but there is a lot of crap here on my desk that I need to get rid of, but I know a few tricks through movie magic. So here we go. All right, it's all gone. That was awesome. Now it's time to show you guys what I am bringing. So again, through some movie magic, we got to get this stuff out of storage and onto this desk. You guys ready? No, the guy said it was just $1,200 and that's all he would need. It's just the fees. And then I get $2.9 million. No, mom, I, no, it's not as, the guy is the prince. And out of nowhere, it just shows up. Let's talk about what I am bringing with me to Las Vegas to bring you obviously what is the most professional and well edited CES content of all time. All right, guys, I make this video basically every year. I was looking back on some of my previous CES footage and I kind of realized that all of these, what I'm bringing to CES type videos end up being kind of the same. I've used the same equipment and brought the same stuff with me for the last few years running with a few minor changes here and there, but this year is gonna be different. I'm actually going solo. Uh, my production assistant, Mike the Manikeek, unfortunately couldn't make it and uh, I'm gonna have to make some adjustments in order to make sure that I can still bring you the right coverage without actually having to lug around a tremendous amount of stuff as I have in the past. If you guys are familiar, I usually bring a giant Pelican case with me stuffed full of multiple cameras and audio gear and lighting, and this year that's just not gonna happen. I had to make some decisions that hopefully make my content more streamlined, more easy to digest, and honestly, easier to produce. So let's see what I'm bringing. The first decision that I made was that I was going to change what camera I was bringing. Now, this camera is a Sony a7 III and I use multiple of them in my daily production workflow. And these are the cameras that I usually bring to CES with me. This year, however, we're not doing that. This is the Sony ZV-1. It's essentially a very small, very portable point and shoot camera that has a fully articulating flip out screen and a microphone input. And that all adds up to the perfect show camera because it's easily portable, it can pack into a bag very easily, and it still shoots excellent footage. A lot of the times, some fill-in shots that you guys have seen on the channel have actually been shot with this camera and you guys would never know. I'm also pairing it with this guy. This is Sony's tripod. Uh, I think they call it their vlogging tripod, but it, either way, it's a tiny little tripod that actually has functionality on it for activating the shutter, starting a movie, zooming in and out, etc., cetera. Uh, and it can be folded and pivoted to either be a tripod, oh my God. And it can be folded and pivoted to either be a tripod or to be held as a vlogging camera. So if I need to do shots where I am um, filming myself, I can do that, or I can prop it up on something uh, and talk to the camera. It's also very easy to hold and manipulate. So pointing it at products uh, for good shots in a crowded environment should be pretty easy. Per the suggestion of one Greg Salazar, I actually added this small rig cage here. And the main point of what this cage does is it provides a shoe on the side and it relocates the mount. These Sony cameras, unfortunately, have the mount right in the middle. So if you actually have a tripod mounted to the camera body directly, you can't open the battery and SD card door, which makes exporting footage a pain. But this cage actually relocates it off to the side, making it a lot easier. Now for audio, you'll see this. This is Rode's wireless go to microphone system. Uh, it wires directly into the camera, so we're not using any kind of external recorder, just using the internal preamp. And the wireless go to, I've tested a lot and it has excellent range and excellent clarity. I'm gonna be bringing along two of the wireless go receivers. Now, this is not necessarily because the battery life is bad. These I think last about six or seven hours on a single charge, which should be more than enough for a day. But having two of them means that if I want to interview somebody, I can do that very easily. Or if in the unfortunate event that the battery does die, I just swap to the other one. Now let's talk about lighting. Lighting at CES is always an issue. And for the first few years, I actually didn't bring any lights with me and I regretted it almost every time. 
In the past, I've brought larger LED panels, but these have proven to be extremely efficient for what they do. These are Aperture's ALM9s, and I've had these for a few years now. They are very bright and they're adjustable, so you can make them brighter, or dimmer, or whatever, or you can even remove this diffuser and get blasted in the face by LEDs. They come with this shoe, so they actually will mount directly to the top of the camera. I'll show you how that looks right here. And this creates a very powerful, very compact system for capturing good video in a not ideal environment. We've got a good camera, we've got good audio, and we've got good lighting, and it's in a tiny package. I'm also gonna bring this guy. Uh, this is something that I picked up, it's from Ulanzi. Uh, I'm not in love with this one. It's not as bright as the aperture lights, but it is another light in case those apertures do die. They don't have the best battery life. So this is just kind of like a, in case of emergency break glass option. Uh, if I need lighting and the other ones are dead, I'll bust this one out. And now we come to the biggest change for this year's CES coverage, and that's the production machine. This is Asus's Zephyrus G14. I picked this up on a really good Black Friday sale. Normally, this is a $1,900 laptop. It was on sale at Best Buy for $1,300. This is the highest end version of this that they make with the 6900HS chip from AMD. That's a Ryzen 9, and the screen just went off because it's not plugged in. And it's also got a Radeon RX 6800S GPU. Now, ideally, you want NVIDIA hardware for CUDA acceleration for Adobe Premiere. However, we are editing in 1080p for this trip as we normally do for CES. Uh, so I think this hardware is gonna be more than enough. I've also upgraded the memory from 16 gigs to 48 gigs of DDR5. And that is, sounds like a weird number, but there's 16 gigs that are on the board and I added a 32 gig module. So there's plenty of RAM, plenty of processing power, and this thing is actually very compact and light. It's actually much lighter and more compact than my razor blade was, and I think it's gonna be way easier to carry around and should be really good to edit on. Now we come to the portion of the program where Kingston went a little nuts. They reached out to me prior to CES and they said, hey, uh, we've got a bunch of storage options and accessories and whatnot that people seem to be needing for CES. Do you need anything? And I'm like, sure, send me an SD card. I think I could probably use another one of these. And uh, they just went completely ham. So we've got two 128 gig uh, SD cards. These are 300 megabytes per second. So they are more than fast enough to capture the video that we're gonna be shooting at CES, which again is just gonna be in 1080p, but these are good for 4K recording and probably even faster than that. So um, these are gonna be excellent moving forward. I'll definitely be using these in my normal production workflow. We've got a couple of Data Traveler Max. We've got a type A and a type C version. Uh, so essentially these are ridiculously fast thumb drives, 1000 megabytes per second read. So this is gonna be used to transport all of the assets that I'm going to need, such as uh, CES intros um, and images and the BPS customs intro and any other video files that I might need to store or any other information that I might need to bring with me. These are gonna be perfect for that. Uh, I'm not gonna to need to worry about uh, a slow flash drive. Uh, and this is also one terabyte. So plenty of storage and it's plenty fast and my camera doesn't wanna focus on it. Okay, we've got two of these. These are just card readers. They're Mobile Light Plus uh, and they're SD card readers. And this is what I will need to transfer footage from the SD cards to the PC. No big deal here. And they also sent over their Nucleum. Now this is a seven in one dongle. Uh, let's see what it provides. So we've got an HDMI at the end there. We've got USB-C and USB-A on the left side. And on the right side, we've got another USB-C, another USB-A, and an SD card reader or a micro or mini SD card reader, one of those. Uh, so this will be really good and I will be able to use this to plug in all of my accessories, charge things off the laptop and whatnot because the uh, modern laptops generally don't have a whole lot of connectivity. Uh, the Zephyrus G14 is actually okay, um, but uh, this is still something that is useful and uh, something I'm bringing along. Not all that exciting here, but we've also got some spare batteries, and these are necessary because although the ZV-1 is an excellent camera, battery life on it is kind of poop. So we're going to be bringing three spare batteries that we're going to charge every night, and we'll have plenty of juice as we move through the show floor and from suite to suite. 
These are my one more triple drivers. Uh, they are headphones that I've used for years now. Uh, you've probably seen them in every single one of my CES videos. They're lightweight, they fold up really easily, and they provide good audio for editing. So this is what I'm gonna be using to make all of the audio edits on the Zephyrus. And the last thing is a set of AirPods Pro. Uh, I am an Apple user, as you can see from my watch and my phone and whatever else. Uh, these are awesome, noise-canceling, second-gen AirPods Pro. And these are for the airplane, because I don't like crying babies. All right, guys, well, that is it for this video. It was a quick one, uh, but I hope now you understand what it takes, even at a very small scale, to produce content at CES. It takes a good amount of equipment, but hopefully this can all fit in my backpack and it'll be a lot easier to carry around. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel. CES content coming very soon, and I hope you enjoy it. I hope I also can get it done with a minimal amount of gear. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.